Hello everybody, welcome to Cars at 100 and on today's video let's talk about everything automotive. Okay guys, let's talk about Geneva Auto Show. The very interesting and very powerful cars came out in the Geneva Auto Show. The most important, the one that fascinates me personally and uh, from which I'm gonna begin I think this video is Koenigsegg Jesko. Uh, which was named after Christian uh, Koenigsegg's father, uh, Jesko Koenigsegg. Uh, such a tribute for him um, to give to his father because his father helped him when he was 25 uh, to do the company, gave him the money to propel the company to the heights that it is right now. So I think that's a very nice uh, kind of a name implying has a history behind that name as well. Very, very personal uh, feeling um, that the car invokes. Um, and uh, in terms of the performance, Koenigsegg doesn't uh, hold back. The car is gonna produce uh, very importantly on E85 ethanol, 1600 horsepower so the car is gonna have more than thousand pound feet of torque as well and it's gonna propel the car probably less than 2.5 seconds it's gonna be a rear wheel drive only but the car is packed with enormous amount of technology including with a seven clutch uh, nine speed gearbox that's gonna shift uh, from first gear uh, to ninth gear in uh, less than a second if it needs to be done uh, by the driver and for the car's performance. The car is gonna have a very interesting bodywork. It's gonna have the craziest amount of downforce ever. If you thought that McLaren Senna GTR had the crazy downforce, this car will produce uh, something that's gonna be even more than that. Uh, and I think it's gonna be ridiculous in terms of the performance. I think it's very important to view this car as a very serious benchmark. Koenigsegg is really stepping up into the territory where uh, cars are becoming very, very sophisticated and Koenigsegg shows this performance very much openly. And I think one of the best automakers uh, in terms of the performance and how they deliver this to customers. A uh, very important factor in terms of this car is going to have a very, very sophisticated uh, bodywork, including that is going to be, of course, carbon fiber, and the car is going to be very light as well. They haven't stated the weight of the car yet, but the car is going to be very, very performance-wise, and it has to be very light as well for the car to be a very um, capable on the track. It's going to be a very interesting car and not just a car for the road, it's gonna be a very serious um, benchmark uh, and I think when they're gonna be testing uh, this car, it's gonna be very interesting. They said that the, the car will achieve more than 300, or 300 miles an hour top speed. So that's something that uh, really is important compared to the Hennessy Venom F5 um, that uh, supposedly should be released soon. Uh, they have stated that the car can achieve 300 miles an hour, but it's been already more than a year and uh, nothing, no results yet. Uh, they actually testing has begun uh, uh, recently, so we'll see what uh, will come out of that. Uh, let's talk about the second important car um, in the auto show, that would be Pininfarina Battista. That's an interesting car because it's gonna be full electric car and um, it's kind of a frenemy, enemy and a friend with a Remax Concept 2 because they both share the running um, platform uh, but the design is different so you could say that the uh, Rima Concept 2 is more of a technical mm -hmm. showcase and Pinatarina's Batista is more of a beautiful showcase here um, so very interesting how these cars uh, um, are moving on to the different heights in terms of the performance and in terms of uh, how electric hypercars now not just supercars are becoming a very important aspects of performance and i think we're going to see this more in future and the car is going to be competing as well like um, uh, ep9 neo uh, that came out uh, recently uh, also that uh, 
is kind of a only track focused car it's gonna be something that um, you know automakers gonna have to kind of step up to it as well uh, the Batista is gonna have an a uh, very very serious performance 1900 uh, horsepower and that's going to be something that will propel the car in less than 2.5 seconds to 60 perhaps maybe less than 2 seconds um, we'll see but overall uh, very interesting awesome that um, uh, these cars are coming out and finally we're going to see more and more electric hypercars the third car that I wanted to mention in today's video is the Bugatti La Votoire Noire if I, if I say it correctly um, that's the tribute to um, Bugatti's um, uh, old uh, Atlantic uh, kind of uh, a car that was kind of lost uh, Bugatti's own car which is uh, one of the most um, uh, expensive cars in the world uh, so this car is uh, one of the most expensive cars right now that you can buy at uh, 12 million pounds or 16 million euros it is the most expensive car you can buy right now on the market and I think uh, they have raised the bar very high but I think the only brand that can really do this is the Bugatti brand the car is gonna be different than Bugatti Chiron and the, in the Geneva Motor Show it was presented right next to the Bugatti Chiron so they could showcase how different the car is how much more beautiful it is that it combines uh, Bugatti Divo and Bugatti Chiron together and that's kind of a cool kind of a look as well they went with the black stealthy look and I think the car is gonna have a uh, very serious performance as well but it's more of a, a looks and a tribute to the past Bugatti a very important Bugatti one of the most important Bugattis uh, that ever existed and it's gonna have the same power and same performance I think than the Bugatti Chiron in terms of the performance I'm not sure but the power is gonna be the same because it's gonna have the same engine but overall I think uh, the show has uh, shown many other cars on the market and I think the most important aspect to get out of this is how much technology helps cars deliver this performance uh, effortlessly uh, if uh, 10 years ago we thought that the performance of 1000 horsepower was something to be to behold and uh, to to be surprised with i think right now it's more of a aspect of uh, 1000 horsepower being just a tuning type of aspect than rather than just a performance benchmark for other automakers to follow